Okay, so let's move along here to uh, the second part of the lab. We are going to demonstrate uh, part counting and working with math and comparison instructions. So we are going to go over to this machine over here. We've got a lot going on here. We have a whole bunch of numeric displays. We got the stack light. We have a vision system. We have parts on a conveyor. So let's do all these parts in order here. Uh, I'll have to add this in here. The first thing we need to do is make the conveyor run. So let's do that. So I'll add in some logic here to make the conveyor run. First thing I'm going to do here is put in what I'm going to call a no-op instruction. Uh, I'm just going to type in NOP. That puts in this instruction type here. I put that in here because I can attach a comment to it. It's basically just an empty rung with a comment attached to it. Uh, and I'm going to call this part counting. I just use that to separate some things. And then let's go ahead here and make our logic. I think this is called conveyor. Conveyor motor. Start PB. And stop. Let's assemble that. Just get this running here. go. So we have parts moving down here. All right. So that's that. Next thing we have to do here, use the vision system to count the total number of blue parts, green parts, and metal parts. So we're going to count each individual part type. So the first thing we need to do is identify them. So we have a vision system here. We've done this in the lab last week. So we know that there are four bits from that vision system and then just create a bit. So I'm just going to create a tag called blue part and that's going to be a boolean Got my vision bits here. I gotta move fairly fast on these. So this is vision three, two, and one. Now I could look it up as to what the uh, the proper code is for each of these. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate this. I know I need three of them. I'm going to make another one called green part. I'll make a bit for that. And I'll make one as, as well called uh, metal as well. Uh, 
metal part. All right, so what are the proper codes for each of these? So right now, I've got a metal part on there right now. I can see that. So it has detected a metal part. So what is the coding for metal part? So it looks like that one is off. So that is lit up all the way through. That gives me a metal part. Let's look at some of these other ones here. Okay, that's a blue part underneath there. So blue part is what combination here. So that's bit one is on, all the other ones are off. So we're gonna change this. That looks like my blue part code. Let's get a green one in here. Nothing but blue and green. There's a green one. Okay. So green looks like that code there. All right, I'm going to assemble these. So now I should be seeing my blue, green, and metal all showing up properly when I run this. So green green, there's the metal, there's the blue. Okay, so that, those all work. All right, so what we want to do now, actually count the numbers that come through. So I have a bit that comes on for each of those now. So I should be able to make each of these bits drive an individual counter to count those. So let's do that. So let's make up a counter. first one here let's count blue so let's say blue parts and we'll call this blue count Create that tag. And I'm actually not going to use the done bit for anything. So I don't need to give this a preset. I'm just going to use a preset of zero. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. So I'm going to duplicate that line. Call this green. Call this one metal. Create these tags. You can see it's the red X because it has an undefined tag. It shows an undefined tag. All right, so let's count these. So we should see those incrementing now as it goes. The next thing I said on here as well, 
Reset the counters if the conveyor is not running. So you can see these counts incrementing. Now let's reset them if they are not running. So if we are not running, so if we do not have, not belt one, let's just call it conveyor. Conveyor motor, if we do not have conveyor motor, let's do a reset everywhere. Let's change this to a reset. Remember, we like to extend, add branch that level. And I can just drag these tag names. That is my three. So you can see how these counts are going. So now if I shut off this conveyor motor, those should reset back to zero. see this happen. If I shut this off, okay, shut it off, and our counts go back to zero. I run it, it starts counting again. All right, so there we go. So that is that. Next thing here, so I've now completed all of these. Calculate the value of blue parts produced if they are worth three dollars each. So, if a blue part is worth $3, what is the total of the blue parts? So that sounds like a math instruction. Let's think about how we do that. If they are $3 each, how much are they worth altogether? So, do we count? Do we know how many we have together? Yes, we do. That is basically the accumulated value of the blue parts. And they are three dollars each so if we multiply the number we've counted multiply by three that should give us the value so let's go into our instructions we are going to grab our math instructions i'm going to grab a multiply instruction and you'll see here we have source a multiplied by source b puts our answer in a destination so source a is actually going to be blue count dot ACC, which is the accumulated value of that counter. So that is the accumulated value of the blue count. Source B, what are we going to multiply this by? We're just going to put in a number 3 in there. And the destination, where do we want this to end up? Well, let's make a new tag for this. I'm going to call this blue value. And we'll create a new tag for that. All right. So that will be that. Now let's watch how this works. I'm going to run. And what we should see is as this value counts here, every time we get a blue part, we should see that number, which shows up in here, gets multiplied by three and ends up in this blue value tag. So this should increase by three every time a blue part goes by. Okay, so that seems to be working. 
Now the interesting thing about math instructions is they just go straight through. So they conduct power all the time. You can just put multiple instructions on the same line together. Whoops. You'll see the, what I'm doing here. I'm just putting multiple instructions on this one line together. And this is legal to do this. And this is commonly done as well because it, you can just put more on a line. So I'm going to make the same, going to do the same thing here for green and the same thing for metal green value and metal value Create that tag. And create this tag as well. And the values for those. Green parts are worth $4. Metal parts are worth $5. So I'll multiply this one by 4. Multiply this one by 5. That should give me each of these. All right, so we can see how that is now working. Working very well. Our next line here, calculate the value of all the parts, all the parts that are produced. So this would be the sum of all three of these numbers together. So this plus this plus this. So there's a couple different ways you could do this. We could use the add instruction and add each of those together. Now one thing with that, if we were to do it that way, it would take multiple instructions to do that because if you look at the add instruction, we can only do one tag add to another tag and put the result in one address and then do it again that is one way we could do it a better way to do it and really the best instruction we have for doing any kind of math is this one here which is called the compute so the compute allows us to just write any kind of uh, expression down here and then put the result into a destination. So we're, let's create a destination called total value. I'll make a new tag called total value. And then here in the expression, we just get a little window here where we can basically put in whatever expression we want. So we're going to call this blue value. And you'll see if it has a squiggly line underneath it, it doesn't recognize it as a tag. Like if I just put in green, if I put in that, it doesn't recognize it. But if I put in a valid tag name, you can see that it turns a different color. So 
So this is basically blue value plus green value plus metal value. that will do we'll just add all of these together so you can see this now is the total of these three numbers here all right there's only two pieces left here. Display all the numeric values on their panel displays. You'll see that we have over here numeric panel displays. So let's make all of our data show up on there properly. So to do that, we're going to use a move instruction. This is under move and logical. And the move instruction basically takes data from one source, puts it in another. This is another one where we can do multiple instructions on one line together. So we'll just move all seven of these all on one line together. So we are going to move, we'll take this blue ACC and this is going to I think blue count display. They have all these defined as DISP. got one called green metal and remember it's the ACC value that we're trying to move here because that's the actual numeric value We got blue total. Right, it's called blue value display, I think. Yeah, it's blue value display. And that'll be blue value. that tag grab this one and then we have total value we're going to move that to total value display so there is seven move instructions all in one line do that we should see all of these numbers now come up here once this comes through all right there's all that data coming in And then our final thing 
do a couple comparisons here. If the total value is less than $100, turn on the green stack light. So for this, we're going to do some compares. So here's our compare instruction set. So we're going to use a less than. And this is basically, is source A less than B? So our B is our total value. Oh, sorry, our A is our total value. And this is going to be 100. So if this is less than A, so if this is true, we'll get an output here. And this is going to be our green stack light. Let's duplicate this two more times. We have a yellow. And we have a red stack light as well. This one here, this is if we are over 200. So we're going to use a greater than expression here. This is the greater than. So if that is over 200, and then this one here, we're going to use a different instruction here. We're going to use the limit. So I'm going to change this to a limit. And this one is very useful. What we can do with this, we can set up two different limits for this one. So we basically say, is our value within in between two different limits? And this one's going to say, if we are between 100 and 200, then our expression is true. So that works like this. If our total value is between 100 and 200, then make this happen. So let's watch this. So there's a bunch of limit instructions. So we'll put that in. We'll actually stop the conveyor here. Remember stopping, reset everything back to zero. See all those went to zeros. Now we will watch this run and what we should see here is this is going to run if our total is under 100 we'll have the green light if we're between 100 and 200 we should get yellow light if we are over 200 we should get red light We're at 27, 30, 72. All right, so this should be coming up to change pretty soon. As soon as that hits 100, we should go to the yellow light. There we go to yellow. So we're now in between these two limits right here on the limit instruction. So this is now true. We'll speed it up a bit here. Here we come, as soon as we go over 200, red light should come on, and there we go, red light is on. Okay, so that is basically everything you need to do for part three of this week's lab. Now the optional part of the lab 
is using this over here. This is a water tank uh, with a bunch of displays and uh, set point. If you want to move on to this one, your task for this, this uses real numbers. These are all rational numbers. Uh, use the input dial right here to enter a set point on the panel. Move numeric values into the fill valve and discharge valve to control adding and removing water from the tank and attempt to automatically achieve that set point. The actual level can be measured on a tag tank level and then display all values on the appropriate panel. So you should be able to give it a set point and then try to achieve that set point by reading the level that you're currently at and adjusting the water coming in or the water going out. This actually works pretty well. Uh, in only a couple lines of code. Okay, so that can be your challenge, if you wish, uh, for continuing on with this lab. All right, so that is all for today, and good luck.